Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org, Consequence, and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks, as always, for making your way here. Check out the series. You know what to do. Like what you see, what you hear. Hit that subscribe button. I put out three new interviews every single week, so it's a great way to keep up with all of your favorite artists. And I'm so excited because it's to sort of have a brand new favorite artist that I get to talk about today. Far From Saints is the band we're talking. Kelly Jones, Patty Lynn, Dwight Baker. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hi. It's great to have you all and to have this new project from uh, from from all of you all. And it's uh, the self-titled record. I mean, first off, it's beautiful. It's fun. It's adventurous. Uh, I love the storytelling and the music. Congratulations on everything. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I like it. it. I like it, too. I like it. We've been trying to learn how to play it just now. So, yeah. <laughs> Is that what's going on? Everybody's learning how to play it for the tour? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah, we recorded the record in... 2019 so it took us four years to get the record to the people um that comes out in june so we've got a few shows this week in london so this is the first time we've actually been in a room playing the songs together since we actually recorded them um so we've got a bunch of other friends playing with us so it's been yeah it's been fun trying to get the trying to piece it all together again yeah (laughs) and i have to set on something i mean obviously there's a big reason why a lot of (laughs) albums got pushed a few years uh, down the road but but it feels like you know to just from what I read of how this came together, you know, touring together with Stereophonics, winning the wave and and jamming backstage. And and for what excitement that must have been to have found this new musical partnership and then suddenly to go, stop. I mean, it's it's frustrating the right obvious word. It was a bit annoying. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it stopped everything for everybody. So it felt petty to be mad that we weren't able to yeah. put that record out. You know, it, it, I think we all felt like eventually it would be the right time and then we would just roll. It's kind of falling. Yeah, it's kind of falling a good time actually now in, in many ways. I mean, we, we used the lockdown to mix the record and live with the record. The problem is we all became fans of the record and forgot we were actually on the record. <laughs> So we got to listen to the record because it's like such a collaborative project. You know, we all write little bits for it and put it together and there's lots of different voices on there. You sometimes listen to it as like a, as as an audience member and you forget you actually took part in the record sometimes. So learning the songs again was a whole new experience because the record only took nine days to record. So it was very, very fast process. So you didn't really remember what we were doing or, you know, examine it too much. It was just very, very spontaneous. So. It was uh, it was nice to go through the multi tracks again and work out what we did. Yeah, they have such a defined sound on this too. That isn't a sound that's specifically either one of your bands yeah. had. I mean, you know, there is the Americana flavor in here. There is a bit of that Southern <clears throat> rock thing that that that's happening. How did that happen? Uh, because usually when you have the collaborations, you're like, oh, I can hear that a little bit more than that. And and I don't really get that sense on this one. I mean, is there a way that you can verbalize that? Like, how did you all find the sound of, of what this band came to be? That's a good point, actually. Um, I was a fan of Patty's voice. You know, I, I, I remember the Wind and the Wave opened up for us in 2013 in the States. And then they came over to the UK to do another tour. And... I was a big fan of From the Wreckage, their first record uh, at that time. That was the one that was out. And then we didn't see each other for a few years, and I, I stumbled over that record again. I kind of really loved it and asked them to do the solo tour of me. And then I think, you know, when you've got a connection with, with voices, uh, it's it's a rare thing. And we just ended up experimenting, doing that Tom Petty, Stevie Nicks track. Um, and that worked really, really well. And then we just said, should we just write some songs together? And, you know, Dwight was doing a lot of the finger picking acoustic stuff, which he's amazing at. And my job was just to put some electric guitar over the top of it. So I was playing the the Jack White part and he was playing the Chris Christopherson part. So, and then uh, Patty was in the middle of it all. So it was <laughs> nothing like either of our bands in lots of ways, but I mean, production wise, I think. Yeah, we, it's we like it is and it isn't. Yeah, we didn't try to make it anything. It really is that sound on the record is just the three of us and our converging influences slamming together. Yeah. And that's a beautiful way for it to come apart. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't a lot of thought about it really. No, no, it wasn't. No, it was much more about a songwriting thing, to be honest with you. I've never collaborated songwriting before. And that experience was the main thing. The producing thing was so fast. We didn't really think a great deal about it. I wouldn't even, yeah, it just happened. It just happened. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, let's get into the songwriting part then too, because um, these characters, you know, I, I think Kelly, you had said at one point, like you like to leave a little hope in, in every song, but, but what mm -hmm. I notice about these characters don't ever feel like they're in the best spot in yeah. the beginning yeah. of things is that true <laughs> well it's funny you should say that because i've been i've been i've been listening to the words i might text you the other day you know because a lot of the stuff when you're making the record you kind of do your little bits and then you sing the songs and you, you you kind of take in what it's about but of late i've actually been really listening to the words because like i said i feel like an audience member and um it's amazing how some of the lyrics are relating to me some of the lines i didn't even write and i'm listening to them going yeah, she really got that nailed there because that's exactly what I've been feeling like this week, and it's quite interesting, you know, how that how that happens. Um, and we didn't really know or talk a great deal about what the end story of the song we wanted to be. We were kind of answering each other's lines a little, mm -hmm. but it wasn't really trying to find some sort of. It was less about a beginning, middle, and end type of notion to it. It was much more. Um, I don't know, it's kind of bouncing off one another, really, wasn't it? Yeah, often the process would be me starting a song, Patty writing words, sending it to Kelly, him immediately sending words back, which he's very good at. And then somehow their words fit together and made a story. I don't, mm. I don't really even know. Again, I don't know how any of that happened. It no. just happened. <laughs> well, Patty, for, from your end, um, I don't know if knowing that these songs have the opportunity to be part of a conversation of the back and forth of two voices. Does that then direct what you're writing? I mean, where, where, what well were you drawing from um, for who we're hearing on the, in these songs? Well, sometimes I feel like, I feel like sometimes it's an answer response where it's two, two different perspectives, maybe in having a conversation and other times it's uh, two voices sharing a, a similar perspective and wanting to express the same feeling um yeah right yeah i think some it, it was it was a bit of a a talking point for like a minute about is this a duet record as in like are we answering each other and then it was like a couple of moments that happens but i think a lot of it is i think we've both gone through similar things in our life but in very very different environments at times, but then you write the narrative and it, it all kind of connects in that way. So as as Dwight was saying, really, it wasn't really structured. It was literally dressing room floors, um, just kind of piecing it together in a very, very uh, organic way. And I personally, with hindsight, look back at the lyrics now and have much more of an insight into what they mean now than I did at the time I was writing them. And there were things that you that you wrote, like lyrics that you wrote that I ended up singing, and there are lyrics that I wrote that yeah, you ended up right, singing. Like true. we really just did what was best for the song that we were working on. It wasn't, in my memory, it wasn't really like a here's what we're going to do with this record. It was just, it was here's what we're going to do with this song, and then now here are all the songs. And yeah, yeah. there were even a few. You should go sing it. No, no, no. You should go yeah. sing that. You go try it. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit like your subconscious is always about three years ahead of you. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, true. You don't really know where it's coming from. Uh, you're kind of like an antenna and it comes out and comes through. And you, at the time, you just want to get it done in the studio. And then you look back at it and you think, you know, it, it's, it's telling you something. It's informing you a bit more now. Mm. You understand it more. That's a great thing about some of these songs, too. And, and Patty, you had said um, that, you know, you, you do hope people listen to it as an album front to back in that sense now that it's all together do you can you see it do you see it as a linear story in the album does it work like that um i'm like looking down at the set list yeah um you know it it might uh, i haven't really thought about it in that way um before but it it certainly might i mean they were all written in a very short period of time and I'm sure a lot of these songs are drawing from similar inspirations, even even the ones that you know don't aren't in my conscious thought. Um, I think it was an inspiration to each and every member of the band. Really, I remember I would be finding some ideas and sending them to Patty late at night after like doing a gig, and then like in a hotel room, I'm sending them things, and and Patty saying, you know, I remember you saying, you know, you just kind of you know, open a door again from a writing perspective, you know, because it was a bit like we were both kind of 
finding parts in each other that we hadn't really found in our own bands for a little while. You know what I mean? It's a bit like... Well, you guys were almost getting to know each other yeah. through there my writing of, song. There was a yeah. lot of long emails going back and forth at the same time as the lyrics about all sorts of stuff. And um, it's a really personal record, really, but I don't really know what it's about in many ways. Um, but it's like, I know I was going through a lot of stuff and I know Patty was going through a lot of stuff. Who isn't and, going through a lot of stuff? But it came out in like... Um, I don't know, in a, in a very kind of organic way, really. It's very ethereal. I think it's very beautiful. I think it has got hope. Um, and I think it has got definitely sides to, to, to this record that none of us have touched on before in any other piece of music we've made. So, um, yeah, it's quite hard to analyze it. I can't, can't quite get I'll get back to you. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's a, you know it's but it's even looking at some of those lyrics and 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 I'm looking at some now and and they still stand out to me like uh, fade a black tattoo. Sometimes love isn't all you need. Like that completely contrasts sixty years of rock and roll music right there in this really great poetic simple way. You know when you say that and even how the you know death and reborn. What now is I mean that's. That's how we get set up. That's the beginning of this whole album. Yeah, you know, and I do think I really if- am. I really am going to take your thought and listen to the record top to bottom and 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 think about that because mm-hmm. I hadn't before. <laughs> yeah, the the death and reborn line. I mean, I I wrote a similar line in the track of "Fly Like an Eagle," and that came up a lot. That that's what I mean by the subconscious being a way ahead of you because I think that is definitely about rebirth and and change and you know the whole. The, the whole butterfly thing you know about you were one thing once and then you change it and i had lots of things going on in my family it, it, it can mean a lot of things but that is not a line you sit down and write that is a line that just comes from somewhere and it comes out mm-hmm. um the and there's, first, a, there's a lot of that on the record the first line in that song was that one of the few lyrics i wrote on that record and <laughs> i actually woke up with that melody in my head the chord, that was with the, that lyric the screaming hallelujah that was the first song we the ever fire heard. flies oh that oh no on the faded black tattoo. yeah 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 that yeah. line was in yeah. my head yeah yeah and i said i think i'm writing about someone interviewing a murderer <laughs> is what i said to patty and then she and him ran with that i was like give it to me let me take it <laughs> yeah it's a great concept to base something off right there well so, yeah <laughs> yeah but for the you record, know. I I do think that love is all you need, and and also love isn't all you need. Like I believe both. Yes, mm-hmm. and yes, and yes, and sure, because nothing has to be yes or no on this. But 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 just to double down on it, it's it it's I love how simple that line still can be, and still be so poetic and meaningful at the same time. Mm-hmm. And that's a great trait that I give to all of you all as artists and lyricists. So Thank you. I say as a fan, that's not a question, obviously. Um, but, you know, for, for me in, in, in whatever experiences I've had, you know, one of the things, though, you know, collaborating with people, you do get to lean on some influences, maybe more so like, you know, you've all been playing for a long time. At some point, you find your own voice and you make your own sound. Is that the case for this? Like, there, you know, because there are moments and like uh, uh, take it through the night, you know, I listen, I was like, oh, I hear a little bit of Fleetwood Mac in there in the best way, you know, a little bit of that chain. Mm going mm-hmm. on in there you know for, for you all to come together was that a part of your story like who do we like who do we want to sound like you know who does that sound like I mean we started the first thing we ever like collaborated on was our cover of Stop Dragging My Heart Around Stevie Nicks and Tom Petty so I feel like maybe that kind of set the stage yeah. in a way the Fleetwood Mac thing obviously the male female connection vocal thing definitely in the back of our minds you know um a lot of the Americana stuff we grew up with when we were kids, you know, the Eagles and all that kind of thing. The Creedence Clearwater Revival. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the Fleetwood Mac thing, I think, is a it's an obvious angle because we <clears throat> again it's all about great songs, you know, catalogue. Um so that was definitely an influence on on that, yeah. And yeah. also I feel like I feel like you guys have musical references that that, that I do like not, about, yeah. but yeah. but Stevie Nicks and Fleetwood Mac is uh, mutual yeah that was her suddenly yeah. calling us old so. it's fine yeah <laughs> it's fine um and, and, and I, I didn't have a musical touch point for this one but the ride is such a great riff rocker yeah i mean if there's any story there that's just a broad question but i'd love to to hear where that one came from it's uh one of my favorites i remember that was you a riff said, yeah. kelly had on his phone 
that yeah. he sent to me. Oh no, that that was uh, the ride you sent me. Take through the night was oh, the beginnings of right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, the ride. I remember you guys sending me that, and you had an acoustic version of it. Um, it was called a terrible life. Mm. Oh, right. Yeah. And I said, you can't call it that. <laughs> no, no. Well, well, maybe you said we can't call it that, but we were, we were, remember we changed that the line, lyrics. We, were... we changed the yeah. lyrics like in the middle of recording. Yeah. We were singing it. We were recording our vocals together. And then Dwight yeah, came well, in and he was like, hey, something about this lyric isn't working. And then. Yeah. You said there's something about the ride. Yeah. 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 Because it wasn't a terrible, terrible. But we it, tried to find the positivity. It wasn't just it, it wasn't just a terrible. I was just thinking of the sand. Yeah, I, I, was, I was going for the hope, and he walked in with the with the ride. I think so. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, and then we added the. Uh, I remember we had a good fun playing the electric guitar on that one. I had, I, I enjoyed that day. That was yeah, good. That was, that was a lot, lot of electric. That was a lot of guitar actually. solos yeah. on that one. So that, that was a good day. Fun. That was a good day I, at the office. Yeah, I feel like that's going to sound live too. Um, that does sound pretty good, like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's now forty-seven minutes long, <laughs> so. I'm working, on, I'm, I'm, I'm working on more <laughs> i'm working on more you know we've only got one album we you know but extend this i still don't know what to do with my hands yeah. during that section <laughs> you do have one album and the band started with the cover um and yeah. you're all fans of covers you've all done lots of covers in your career have you added any more to the catalog for the upcoming tour are you are you talking about that or we were talking about that today trying to figure out some good ones actually yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah we've got a couple we may learn for tomorrow um but the first two shows, we've only got like an hour anyway, and the and the second show is like a half an hour. So at the minute, we got songs, we, we we're good. Uh, but we yeah, we're gonna fill the canon somewhere along the line. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just seeing, by the way, who you guys are playing with this summer, some of those names that you get to open up for. I thought, what a hell of a great way to introduce a band. Yeah, maybe. like here's how it starts on this stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we've had some good opportunities. Uh, we do the Roger Daltrey show on Sunday at the Teenage Cancer Trust, which Stereophonics have been quite a big ambassador for them for 20 odd years. So it, it was great to get that opportunity. Um, yeah, I, I mean, when we started out with our band, it's, we always looked at it as stealing other people's fans, really. If you can get in front of some major acts, then there's a good chance that there's a percentage of them will go away and buy your record. So, yeah, I mean, we stole some of your fans. Yeah, exactly. and now we're going to steal their fans. Yeah. So, well, and yesterday, actually, after everyone was wishing me happy birthday, and ever, all of their names are like Stereo Dave yeah. and <laughs> Stereophonics yeah. Dylan and all that stuff. <laughs> all of them saw one of Patty's videos and were like, I saw someone in that video on bass. And yeah. every single message to me. Dude, really? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Richard has some, yeah. some fans. For yeah, because Richard plays, uh, he's playing bassless live as well from Stereophonics, so mm -hmm. that's been good. Yeah. Right on. Well, I love what you both do. I'm a fan of both of your bands. Um, Thank you. We play both of those bands, uh, especially over here. I'm in, I'm in, uh, aside from Consequence at WFPK here in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, too. And uh, yeah, cool. such big fans of, uh, of everything that uh, all of you all do. So uh, I love this partnership so much, and I hope there's going to be more albums in the future. Uh, whether or not you're looking at that or not, I'm just saying that, you know, as I say, as a greedy fan, that I hope it keeps coming because this is some really sweet stuff you guys got going on. Thank, Thank you, you very man. much. Yeah, it'd be good. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. And thanks for taking the time to talk about it. No problem. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Really Next time we'll actually know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. Yeah, yeah I don't think <laughs> so. Yeah. I kind of like it seven... this way, actually. Yeah. Yeah. It was cool. After a seven hour rehearsal day, you ask us what the songs we've been playing all day about. Yeah. It's like, oh, we don't know. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Right on, guys. Well, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. And uh, and take care. We'll see you around. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. You. Cheers. All right. Bye. Thank you. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you for uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. 
That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.